What is the news on general purpose industrial motors that, all of a sudden, for many people, you start working on in China? That's exactly the right question. All of a sudden, I did not expect to find myself dealing with these things. Two weeks ago, Dmitry Duyanov gave me the task to find an analog of the 8-pole 1.5 kilowatt AIR. When I started to look into it, it turned out that the factory did not produce such motors, that is, 8-pole ones, only 6-pole ones. The AIR analog is a 165 diameter motor. If we know a little bit about the design of the AIR motor, and it is 120 millimeters of length, in some cases 125 millimeters in length. These are the parameters that the YX3 motors have. These are third class motors, but up to six pole ones. There are no eight pole. 40 eight groove motors like AIRs. So we settled on much lower class motors, that is IE1 class. And these are Y2 motors. The oldest Chinese motors, which are produced by virtually all factories in China. And this design is 155 mm, that is 10 mm smaller in diameter in length, compared to standard industrial motors. It is length 70 and 90, that is 750 and 1.1 kilowatt power. So there is no 1.5 kilowatt ones with this design in China. Its description cannot even be found in the books. There is 1.5 kilowatt, but its size 112. So we settled on size 100, but we increased the package length of 120 millimeters. This is about the same motor analog as I produce, DA100SL, with exactly the same parameters. The only thing which is different is that it's 6 pole and this one is 8 pole. And the housing remains standard, right? No, the housing has been elongated too. Because if you imagine 90 millimeters, it is 1.1 kilowatt. We made it 30 millimeters longer. That is, the aluminum housing of the casing itself had to be extended by 50 hertz. At first we started testing it as a regular 1.5 kilowatt motor and got the efficiency of 77.6%. That is 3.1% more than the original one. And is it a big advantage if you compare it generally with the existing counterparts or something like that? I mean, is 3% efficiency improvement a lot or not so much? I have given a gradation by class. If you look at this gradation, in a class like this, it's one step of efficiency. That is, it means going from IE1 to IE2 which is what companies are fighting for to convert motors to another efficiency class. That is basically... But the next step we took was to increase the power to 1.8 kilowatt, and the efficiency was 77.1%. So we maintained the increased power and made the efficiency consistent with class IE2-2. That is, a 1.5 kilowatt motor was converted to 1.8 kilowatt, an efficiency class, IE2. So you can calculate based on solely the power we achieved, that is, 1.8 kilowatt, what the savings are. Material savings, energy savings, with the increased efficiency. That is, we increased the motor power and improved the efficiency, if we consider 1.8 kilowatt, by almost 3%, by 2.6%. This is modernization, because we have not made any changes to the motor design. We use the same winding type that Dmitry Duyunov introduced 10 years ago. The Chinese motor is the oldest one, the Y2 type. If you check all the manufacturers, this is the oldest motor. It's not even class IE1 yet. So it's a modification of the oldest Chinese motor. 
There is nothing in it. We just took a frequency converter and brought it to other capacities. That is, it's pure modification. Some people say that we don't modify because we add motor winding that wasn't there in the original motor. But we modify the motor itself. It had a standard winding, classic winding. We make Slavanka-based winding, which means that it is pure modification. If we consider production, then yes, it is production. But it is the modification potential of old motors that we are talking about. Savalmash has not yet made any profound development in this area. This is winding data. We simply applied Slavanka to ancient motors. Why is the Chinese party interested in this project too? Because I am also forwarding now the Chinese government's program that aims to reduce energy consumption, resource consumption, power consumption, and improve the environmental situation from 2016 to 2030. The first thing is what prompted the interest. Look at the size, 112 and 5.5 kilowatt motor on the left side, as shown in the picture. The motor on the right is 11 kilowatt, size 160. And our motor is in the middle, size 109 kilowatt, well, 7.5 kilowatt. If you compare it with the 7.5 kilowatt yellow motor below, it is 70 kg, which is 25 kg difference. That is nearly a threefold weight reduction. That is, under the program announced by the Chinese government, we are removing obsolete motors. The obsolete ones are not yet IE1. It is still motors that are used by enterprises. They do not qualify as IE1 from factories. There are motors, if we consider 7.5 kilowatt, that weigh 80 and 90 kilos. But we settle with 70 kilos. That is, we make almost three motors out of one motor. Now, you've brought up the price of a frequency converter. Yes, a frequency converter costs as much as one motor. That's price-wise, but not energy-wise. Because all these boards that are actually used, don't use the Earth's energy resources, the ones that are in use. Aluminium that China buys, copper that China buys from Russia, steel too. They also buy high-tech steel, though they are producing more and more of it domestically. But this governmental program encouraged the factory to work with us. And we demonstrated that we had a big advantage here. The company has a license to substitute, to modernize plants, enterprises, to remove old motors that no longer meet the energy efficiency requirements of the classes and upgrade them for free. That is, we take an old obsolete motor, weighing 70-90 kilos, give them a motor that weighs 25-26 kilos, give them an inverter for free, but we make a profit from it, because by sending the motor for redesign, we get three motors out of it. This is beneficial not only for the enterprise engaged in it, for us to be more precise, but also for the governmental program, because this way the program is implemented to save energy resources and production resources. It turns out that we are very close to the point where we can talk about the specific economic effect of applying combined winding motors. Yes, exactly that. That is, we do not use magnets, which I have already mentioned. The company already has even IE4 class technologies, but the induction ones with magnets are used as well as the frequency controller. That is, IE4 are achieved with magnets, and frequency controllers, inverters, are used. 
So it turns out that if we sum up, the motor you've designed is significantly smaller than its counterparts, more powerful, more reliable, has better overload capability, meets the highest energy efficiency classes, and this motor is in demand on the market today. These words are confirmed by the actions that have already been taken, creating a new company, running a full-fledged business, and implementing governmental programs. So far, that's just China. I think that other states will also be very interested in this kind of activity. But it will be possible to judge the viability of this whole thing after some time. Because if we see that, well, I won't hesitate to use this word, the current leader country, the manufacturer of everything in general, begins to implement such technologies and apply them en masse at their plants, then I guess that means something. Well, yes, let's factor in that China uses, doesn't produce, but uses 50% of the resources of all the Earth's motors, 50%. Then imagine, if we consider not just one individual country, we live on the same planet Earth. So let's talk the whole globe by changing the environmental status of one country. By changing the energy consumption in China alone, we can improve the environmental status of the entire globe. 50% of motor use. That says something. If China starts using this technology, especially of this class, saving energy resources, then the countries that depend on resources, that do not have their own resources, let's think about Europe, what is going on right now. They basically have no resources. They are scooping up resources from countries that have these resources. Russia has resources, and China also does not have all the resources that Russia uses. We are talking about saving resources. Governments will be eager to buy these technologies from us. We just need to make the first steps into the market. And we are making them. Well, Victor, I don't think that's all the news. We certainly paid a lot of attention to the general purpose industrial motor. Probably it would be interesting to know, at least in brief, what processes are taking place with the angle grinder and with the drive in general. Has there been any feedback after all? Should we expect it or not? Well, the production of the angle grinder, as they already know it in China, has also started here. There were some difficulties, because the angle grinder arrived broken, it had been damaged in transit. Now they have made a new one from plastic. The shrinkage loss was not taken into account. Such mishaps always happen when something new is done. It's never perfect from the start. First fry is bound to be a flop, they say. So for a reason. What Savalmash completed is something that China wasn't familiar with. So the first tries were a bit troublesome. But the drive is coming. What we have now in China is not only a universal angle grinding machine, we also have two additional drives. And that's taking into account the fact that the mitre saw will be coming too. All the necessary equipment is being ordered from the angle grinder. That is, the molds, the tooling is being ordered. It is quite a time-consuming process, since the longest one is tooling all the metal parts, pressing the stator, the rotor, the plates. Plastic is a bit faster. It takes up to a month and a half manufacturing alone. We still need to adjust and fine-tune everything, and make the controllers too. So. It will take some time. But the preparations are underway. This process has been launched. Now it's down to the pace and the work of our suppliers, the companies that make this tooling. But I'll add one more thing about the drive. We're not going to settle on just the angle grinder. And I can reassure the investors who are worried that we'll switch to other power tools now that we will start implementing them. We shouldn't forget that all the power tools that will be made here 
and actually meant for Solomash too. We are starting to enter the markets. But there is one thing to keep in mind. We will only use one drive now. The fact that we've gone industrial now is one thing, but it's a modification potential, modernization. The angle grind is due, but we provide one drive for it. We let people try it, test this Slavanka technology in a whole new industry or in a completely different direction. It's power tools. But power tools are also different, with various capacities and applications. One drive can be used for many purposes, but the goal is not only to win customers for this drive, but also to attract customers for other drives. And this is exactly the goal the DNE pursues. It is not merely about producing one motor or completing one order, but about three to five orders a year at least. And unless we show our product, we will not get orders. We have already been down this road. We tried everything. We involved interested parties at every stage. The companies interested in the technology all said, give us the product. Including what I did in Germany. When I converted a class IE4 motor to class IE5, and they told me, give us the product, we need that motor. But where do I get it? I have no production. Now we have engaged a Chinese partner who can produce. It's like an investor too. They're investing in tooling. They're investing in motors, which have now also been ordered from Savalmash. The same goes for handheld power tools that will be coming to Savalmash. Savalmash will start commercializing all these power tools to be produced. All of them. We can assume so. How do you get a manufacturer interested? By giving them the opportunity to enter the markets with the products too, but paying a license fee from the sales that the plant will generate. That is, it's double profit. First, the commercialization of handheld power tools by Solmash. And second, the license fees to be paid from the sales made by the plant itself. I mentioned the drives. I did that right on the day we were interviewing the factory, the vice president of the factory regarding their interest. Right away a question came up. They have a big problem with the planar machines, that is, processing wood, woodworking. The same drives are used there as in the angle grinding machine. Actually identical, a little less powerful with 1.5 kilowatt input power. But there is a problem with their brushed motors operating on those loads, which make them non-operable due to this wood dust. The brushes get clogged in a day. The brushes have to be replaced almost daily. The factory gets complaints because the brushes fail, the terminals get clogged and the motor stops running. But it's not just the motor. It's the entire woodworking machine and the cost is quite different. If you look at this class of machines, you can see what their market price is. Having brushes fail every day is costly for a company that processes wood. Not only is it a waste of time, but also a waste of materials. You have to change brushes every time. But it's not just the brushes here, because the terminals get clogged too. Motors start malfunctioning after a while, because the terminals fail. By replacing it with our angle grinder motor, which fits perfectly for this machine, we get another power tool that Sovelmash can also offer in the markets and make a profit from it. 
с этого прибыль. It turns out that Sovmash now has a lot of potential. This is my opinion, as a person who sees these processes from the inside and beyond. So it turns out that today we are nearing completion of the construction project for the Design and Engineering Technology Department, where these motors, drive systems and controllers will be designed and put into production. But again, what does putting into production mean? Putting into production means creating production lines, right? And production lines must meet all modern requirements, and they must also have an abundance of equipment, that is, machine units, which must also be developed and manufactured, and get certified in their market. And this all will be done as well much accordingly. What happens next is the following situation. While the DNE has not yet been commissioned, and the construction is nearing completion, you, in turn, are already bombarding the market in China with offers. Not only are partners for the company selected, who can start manufacturing these products with Solomash drives used, but we also see the situation is quite complicated worldwide. The transport collapse, the sanctions, the closure of some markets for the Russian Federation at the moment. But these markets are open to China. And speaking of production, we can enter these markets both under the Sovelmash brand, probably with certain subtleties, and under other brands, but with our technology. It's advertising, it's flooding the market. In fact, the world expansion begins slowly. And is it actually good or bad? It's a good thing, in my opinion, because it opens up additional opportunities. And yet again, it's just one kind of drives. As you said, I guess I can rephrase it, this is a demo version, so that the market can try it out, and the businesses can understand what they are going to compete with, and whether they should compete at all, or maybe collaborate, although Sovelmash never planned to compete with anyone, but offered cooperation. And this is exactly the option when people can try it, test it, and understand if they need it.